Well, I guess we'll get started. Uh, this uh, almost almost noon. Uh, thank you for coming here on behalf of the family and and uh, just uh, the celebration of life. And let's just uh, begin with a word of prayer, and then uh, we'll sing a couple of hymns. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your grace and comfort at this time. Lord, we also thank you for all your goodness to us. Pray that you might just comfort the family and thank you that we have the hope of eternal life promised in the word of God and from God himself who cannot lie. And Lord, we just pray that you might just give us that comfort from scriptures that give us hope. We thank you for these things and ask your blessing and comfort this day in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'll take on your tables, there's a little uh, song. There's two songs on the front and on the back. The first one is Be Still My Soul. And uh, then we will sing How Great Thou Art. We'll sing all three verses of this one and all four of How Great Thou Art. sing how great thou art. Everybody can sing a little better understanding. The next page on the back side, how great thou art.
so good to see everybody this morning, and um, I know this would be so pleasing to Mom. And um, she wanted us just to have this tiny, intimate group to um, celebrate God's blessing in her life. But we won't tell her that people from all around the world are joining us. <laughs> but we're all family and so thankful for everybody who can be here with the Zoom meeting and just be with us to rejoice in our blessed mom, Tiny Mackey. I'm going to tell Tiny's story this morning. Tiny Mackey was born near Savitakile, Finland, on September 17, 1927, to Johanna and Lempi Kontunen. She was the eldest of 10 children. In 1948, when she was 20 years old, she came to the United States sponsored by her aunt, her father's sister, who lived in San Francisco. While in San Francisco, she lived with a doctor and his wife, taking care of their home. And that was quite an interesting experience, because I remember a story she told about learning the language, and um, one of the, the doctors said, Tiny, bring me the honey. And she said, the honey? Because he always called his wife honeys. And so, and so she was very quiet. She wasn't quite sure what honey she should bring, but I think she got it all figured out. But I remember that sweet story. <laughs> Afterward, she found employment at a large music store called Sherman Clay. In the early 1950s, she met, met Penty Mackey, our papa, who also came from, Finland, at a, came from Finland at a Scandinavian Midsummer Festival in San Francisco. They were married July 5th, 1952 at a Lutheran church. After beginning their family, they moved to Central Valley, California. While living there, they started a TV and radio repair shop and then built a furniture store in the early 60s. Tiny stayed home to raise their children and did the bookkeeping for their business very meticulously. Everything was perfect. <laughs> they moved to Redding, California in 1970. Tiny and Penty were longtime members of Grace Baptist Church and their children attended Liberty Christian Schools. Tommy loved to entertain missionaries, family, and friends throughout the years. She loved to knit, crochet, plant flowers, and especially enjoyed the hummingbirds that frequented their yard. She also enjoyed trips to Finland to see her family and to other places around the world. She loved God and enjoyed many hymns of the faith. She is preceded in death by her husband, Penti, of 60 years, and her sister, Toini. She is survived by her four sisters and two brothers in Finland, two sisters in California, and her three sons and their wives. She also had seven grandchildren, five great-grandchildren, and many nieces and nephews whom she loved dearly. Tommy was a wonderful wife, mother, sister, grandmother, friend, who showed unfailing love to all her family. We loved her with all our hearts, and eagerly await our reunion with her and our Savior in glory.
When I was asked if I would like to share some, share how it was growing up with my sister Daimi, <coughs> my first thought was we really didn't have growing up time together in Finland. Daimi was 15 years old at that time when I was born, and she left being at her teen years to work in La Peranta. When she left to America, I was only six years old, so our time together was very short in Finland. <clears throat> I remember a few occasions. I had the privilege to stay with my sister in La Peranta for a whole week, and having my big sister's full, att full attention just for myself. She pampered me with many gifts and most of all with her loving presence. Another memorable time was when my sister Tiny and Toini organized the cross-country ski, ski race for all of us village kids. It was much fun and we all came to finish line as winners. Each one of us worth a first prize. Was it candy, toys or drawing books? Those few years flew by too fast and the time came for Taimi to leave and go to a far away, far away country called America. At that time, I did not understand how far that country was. Yes, it was, yes, it was short time being together in Finland, but not knowing then that we end up having much more time together in later years in this far away country. Our Aunt Olga and her husband Ferdinand sponsored Taimi here. So my sister Taimi left, not to La Peranda, but a little bit further, not knowing how far, thinking I will see her soon. Often I found my mother looking sad and repeating singing the same song over and over. To open ocean left my daughter, asking me to pray for her. Those white cap ocean waves carried my sister to far away land, not knowing when we can see her. I heard my mother saying, it might take a long while when we will see her. <coughs> After time we were settled in that far away country on the other side of the ocean, she started sending unbelievable pictures. Some Christmas pictures were taken in Golden Gate Park where flowers were blooming in the middle of winter, <laughs> and also pictures of redwoods where a car can drive through the redwoods tree, and pictures of Yosemite's powerful waterfalls and magnificent high mountains. That was too much for us to understand and hardly to believe that there are such places. It was not only pictures she started sending, Every year, just before Christmas, we received Christmas packets that we were allowed to open before Christmas because it included beautiful dresses for us girls and pants for boys to wear at our school Christmas party. That package also included kahvi, candy, rice, dry fruit, toothpaste, and much more. When we were sitting around the dinner table having Christmas dinner, enjoying the taste of delicious rice pudding and sweet soup made out of rice and dry fruits what Tiny sent us, we felt her presence and remembered her for her kindness and love. <coughs> it took eight years before our sister Tiny was able to come and visit us in Finland. When she wrote the letter letting us to know that she is coming, I hardly could wait for that moment when I can finally see my sister after so many years. Can you imagine what an excitement and joy there was in that moment when we saw her after eight long years apart? So much to share, so much to know about her life in this faraway country called America. The time went by too fast and we had to say goodbyes again, but hoping that next visit will come soon. <coughs> she made many more trips to Finland after that. 
One of those trips, Taimi and Penti invited us to move to America. They sponsored us whole family, my husband Hannu, me, daughters Jana and Minna. And we started our first home in this far away country in Redding, California. <clears throat> they had apartment ready for us, all furnished and decorated, ready to move in. That was very thoughtful of them. I am ever grateful for their kindness and love. It was not my sister, if it wasn't my sister Daimi and Penti helping us and praying for us, who knows if we were able to make it here. Our apartment was, well, <clears throat> our apartment was a walking distance from their home, what made so much easier to visit and keep close connection. We had much fun visiting them, get together around a dinner table, having ongoing conversations, or having sauna and swimming nights. Our daughters playing with Mark and Carl, mm -hmm. and also with their neighbor girls. Eric used most of his, his free time playing organ. It was a blessing to have all of them helping us to adapting for this new place, new culture, and new language. Tiny and Bente invited us to Grace Baptist Church where we could grow also spiritually. My sister, Tiny and Bente, was a blessing to us in so many areas in our lives. After being three years in Reading, we moved to Bay Area, but keeping in very close contact with each other. When my retirement time came closer, I started thinking to move back in Reading. I bought house close to my sister, just a walking distance away, so we were able to have many wonderful visits again. Tiny and I made a week-long vacation trip to Port Bragg, a beautiful, relaxing place by ocean, and having a wonderful time together, touring the gorgeous, gorgeous flower garden, this glass, glass beach, and many boutiques and restaurants. Just being, just being together and having fun, sometimes even be silly. <laughs> this trip to us would have not been possible if it wasn't a wonderful family member, Gail, who volunteered to take care of Bente. Daimi has been taking care of Bente for many years. After he needed more care, he was placed to care home. That was a very difficult decision for Daimi to make. Later on, when Daimi's health was failing and she was not able to be home any longer, even with much of her family members' help, Mark being with her days and nights, giving his mom a loving, wonderful, and best care as possible. When Tammy started needing more help, then she was placed in the same care home where her husband Bente was before. Tammy was visited often by family members and friends, bringing her goodies and anything she did. Mom. Really appreciate that. And I just wanted to share a few words from the scripture as you all know that she was a woman of faith. And she always wanted to hear words from the gospel and um, was always encouraged when I was able to share a few things with her. So I want to share a few things with you I've learned over the years, um, specifically on life, death, and sleep. So, a few things you may know, a few, few things you may not know, but I was working on this message the day my mom passed away. I was not feeling well the two days beforehand, and then Sunday, Cynthia went there early, and she was there with my mom, mom when she passed. So I was working on this, so I, I would just like to share a few thoughts, um, hopefully, There'll be some encouraging words here of our future reunion with my mom. So in regard to life, we all know that God is the creator and giver of life. Genesis 1.1 tells us that he created all things. And so he's the giver of life in our physical life, but we also know he's the giver of our spiritual lives. And we know that without being born again, we don't have eternal life. 
but with the working of the Spirit, it enables us to um, accept Him, believe Him, and have that eternal salvation in heaven with Him. So just as back in Genesis 1, each end of Adam and Eve had a choice to sin, God gives us a choice to believe. So in regard to death, death means separation. It means separation both from the body, from the spirit, which occurs at physical death, and then there's a spiritual death that occurs between the spirit and God. So those of us who believe are encouraged to know that we will, again, not be separated from God, but we will have eternal life with God. In regard to sleep, there's a few things I want to share. I, I worked in the sleep industry for about 14 years, and so there's three specific things I want to let you know that I see that we can see in our physical sleep that applies to a spiritual truth. Number one is sleep is timed. And we see when you go to sleep, there's an onset timing. There's also a cycle. There's 90 minute cycles as you fall asleep that transition through the night. And then there's also the circadian rhythm, which is a 24 hour cycle where you are awake and then you get sleepy and go to sleep. So our bodies are on this, this clock. And then there's a transition is the next thing that occurs in sleep. There's stage N1, N2, N3, and REM. And so you go through these transitional phases when you sleep. And then what's interesting about the REM sleep, that's when you're dreaming. And a lot of people don't know that when you're actually dreaming, your body's paralyzed. And so there's a separation of your body from your mind at that time. Your mind on the brain waves are actively working, but your body is actually dead. And so those things get brought back together again uh, a couple times a night, which is pretty amazing that we don't go into REM and then end up, basically, that's the end of us. Um, sleep is also temporary. We also know that we wake up, and so, which is a good thing, because you don't want to stay asleep forever. So in the spiritual realm, there's also um, sleep being timed, sleep being transitional, and sleep being temporary. So in regard to the spiritual realm, um, God has a time for each of us. We know in Job and in Psalm it says that he has marked out boundaries. So just as my mom had a time to be born and a time to pass, we all too will have those, those uh, times. Transitions, there's also transitions that will occur that we should be encouraged about. And it was about two days before my mom passed away. I was listening to Dr. David Jeremiah, which you may know. He's a pastor at Shadow Mountain. He was um, Lisa and Jason's pastor there in San Diego. And he had a quote on the radio, and so I looked it up, and I, I printed up what he said. As believers, our bodies will be transitioned into, you know, from corruption to incorruptible, from mortal to immortality, the Bible tells us. So this is a quote from Dr. David Jeremiah. Our bodies will not only be indestructible and identifiable and incredible, our bodies will be infinite. It is buried a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Paul goes to great effort to describe the difference between our earthly body and our heavenly body. He points to Adam as the image bearer of this body. He points to Christ as the image bearer of our new body. He says that we are going to have a spiritual body. Now let me just talk with you a moment about this because it is a matter of great confusion for a lot of God's people. What is a spiritual body? He's not talking about an immaterial body. We already know that Jesus touched, he handled, and he ate. Jesus did not have a quote, unquote, spirit body. He had a material body, and we're going to have um, bodies just like him. We're going to have real bodies. Paul is talking here about a real body that is no longer controlled by the physical appetites, but, by, but a real body that is controlled by the spirit. Our new bodies will exist on a higher plane than our new bodies. 
our, and our new bodies. Instead of being governed by our appetites, we will be governed by the Holy Spirit. That's what a spiritual body is. So as a believer, it's really exciting those special things that will happen in transitions. When we pass, we will have that body at some point in the future that we will be reunited with our spirits. And then last, spiritually in sleep, it's also temporary. We do not stay dead in the grave, but we will rise again. Um, and so the scripture says that over and over again, you know, to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. So in conclusion, our mom's greatest desire for each one of us is that we have believed and that we can look for that new eternal life and that as we pass and we sleep, we will rise again to an eternal home in heaven with our Lord and Savior. So we love you all, and we thank you for coming. I just want to mention a few other quick little things. Over there on the table, there's a basket that has rocks. I have a hobby of cutting, grinding, and polishing rocks, so all of you can have a rock of black obsidian. Over the years, I've sort of come up with some things. It says in scripture, God is our rock. So as you take that, we know that he is our solid foundation. Also, even though our mom has passed away, it seems dark and black, like those pieces of obsidian. But when you look in the light, those are called rainbow obsidian. There's multiple colors, and some of them, some have a couple colors, but um, look at it in the light. And so even though things look dark, we know that there's a rainbow on the other side. So it's just a few things to, to remind you of that. So um, Lene is gonna be coming up. She's gonna be reading a poem that Lisa wrote. And after she's finished, some of you, if you'd like to think about some memory you wanna share about my mom, we'll take the mic off and, and roam around and let you have opportunity to share. All right, thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, my sister is in Romania and on Zoom right now. Hopefully they can hear me okay. Hi! Um, and so I'm going to be reading this poem that she wrote uh, specifically for my grandma. She has a huge gift of poetry and so I'm going to be reading this for you guys. And it's also on the back of your program. Grandma's Legacy. When I reflect on years gone by that grandma spent with me, these are the memories that embrace my heart and form a legacy. It can't be seen or touched like wealth. It's something you can't buy. She found the pearl of greatest price, a hope that will not die. Her love for others overflowed from the one who loved her first. The son of God has rescued her, had rescued her and quenched her soul's great thirst. My grandma recognized her need before God's holy throne. And there she received his gift of grace to be his very own. So often, as a little girl, I ran into her arms. She always made me feel secure from any cares or harms. The secret of her gentle strength was more than met the eye, for she was nestled in the hands of Christ, the Lord Most High. I grieved the loss of one so dear and longed to hear her voice, but knowing Grandma's home at last is a reason to rejoice. Because my grandma knew the one who rose up from the dead, she and I will reunite where no more tears will shed. That was written by Lisa Farley. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna walk around in a minute if anyone has anything they would like to share or just a small memory about grandma. Um, I wrote something, I'll see if I can. Mm -hmm. 